this may gross some of you out, but um, this is one of my favorite treats, and it's much better if you can go somewhere where it's made fresh and you get it. And but here in South Carolina, I can only buy it frozen. It comes with two of these packets in this thing. I forgot things like eight dollars for this. Here's the ingredients, if you must know. I need, again, I need my magnifying glass to be able to read that. But it is gluten-free. It does have MSG. Um, it has lard, which is not an issue for me, but commercial lard has BHT in it. It also has, what is this, um, sodium lactate. Citric acid, probably GMO. Uh, it has rice in there. The, there's a clear glass noodle that's made from sweet potato starch and water. Uh, beef blood, pork snout, uh, potato starch, pork, salt, uh, ginger, garlic, black pepper, and a natural hog casing. So, I thought I'd show you... Um, it comes with this one packet. You know, I have bought this before and I probably threw it away because I was about to throw this away this time too, thinking it was some sort of silicone package, but it's actually seasoning salt. It has uh, salt, chili powder, sesame seed, and black pepper. So I didn't have to make my own. I don't always, sometimes I just eat it plain. Isn't that pretty? It's, it's kind of an orange color. It's in the center. Um, very simple. You, if it's been thawed, you put it in boiling water for five minutes. If it's still frozen, which I'm not planning ahead enough to thaw it, uh, it's in the boiling water for 10 minutes. And then you turn the power off and you leave it in the water for five additional minutes, regardless of whether it was thawed to begin with or not. And... It's still hot. Oops. Nope, I didn't get it cut. Let's turn that over so it'll look nicer. There you go. Just, I think most cultures have some sort of blood sausage. Whether it's made with pig. Um, normally what happens... In any culture, there's always poor people. And poor people need to use whatever's left over, what the rich people don't want. So whatever they're able to salvage from any sort of butchering, and that's blood. They, you know, um, here in the South, they would put, um, see the noodles? They would put, uh, anytime uh, like a pig was being slaughtered, something was put under uh, to catch any of the blood drippings. Um, whether they use that blood or fed it to uh, their dogs or, you know, it, it wasn't wasted. You can even use some of that in gardening. And normally when you buy it fresh, it doesn't fall apart like that. It, it's a nice little clean, clean cut. So excuse me while I break my fast. It's actually 2.40, so I'm, I'm hungry. Excuse me for still talking with my, with food in my mouth. This is really good. So, I hope I've got the right angle doing this by myself. So, this is a, like I said, this is one of those um, things I like to treat myself with. It's gluten free at least. It's not a 100% um, what I would consider healthy because of those things I already listed. And until I learn how to make this myself, this is how I have to get it. Comfort foods are things we had in our childhood, normally. It's rarely a new um, food that's been introduced in your diet in the last couple of years. If, when you want comfort from eating 
you normally gravitate toward those things. That's why mac and cheese in the South is like a huge comfort food, potato salad during the summer. So this was one that I didn't have for probably 30 years. You know, I got, I came to the States when I was six years old from South Korea. And we didn't have this until my mom and I made a trip to Atlanta one day. And there was this huge market down there we, I like to go to. We, we've been going to uh, periodically over the years. And back then, when you walked in, it was like, it was a former grocery store or Lowe's or something, one of those big box places. But they had converted it, the inside, they called it Buford Highway Farmer's Market in Atlanta, Georgia. And when you first walked in, there were like, it was almost like you went into another world. It was like a bunch of different vendors um, making stuff from, you know, right there in front of you, um, treats. There was someone actually doing these and they would cut it up and they put it into one of those styrofoam trays, uh, sliced up, some little container with some, uh, some sort of seasoning uh, mix to dip it in along with some pork cuts that they would in there. I can't, I'm not sure exactly what those pork cuts were. It wasn't, it wasn't meat, and I don't think it was stomach, but anyway, it was another sort of pork cut, and you would kind of alternate eating that. And then they, I mean, now when you walk in, you just, you're walking into the huge produce section. You, it, it, it has almost every kind of produce you can think of fresh. They had like five or six different types of Asian pears when I went there a few weeks ago. And it's not like that anymore. I didn't see anyone making this. Um, sadly, we weren't able to explore it as much as it's, it's huge. The whole, their meat department is like, it's like a big puzzle. Every part of the pig and cow is there. If you know how to put it back together, it's all there. It's kind of scary, but it's neat too. Um, and all the seafood, so they, they have live tanks, live crabs, um, huge seafood section. And then what's not in the fresh thing, you can find that frozen. But this is one of my comfort foods. Mm. And this is also, if you weren't looking, if you didn't see this, if you didn't know what it was, if you had your eyes closed and you were to taste this with no idea, no preconceptions, no cultural biases. It's not real flavorful. It's not a strong flavor. You know, without this, it's like, there's not a lot of flavor. This kind of punches up what little there is. And sometimes it can mask what there is. So, but it's very smooth. It's delicate. It's not a strong, it has... There's hardly any smell to it. You know, well, you know, I got kimchi and I make, I cook with kimchi. Did that last night with some pork. But this, and I just find it very comforting. Uh, if you get a chance, do give this a try. Try to put those cultural biases behind you. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Oh. What are your comfort foods? I'm really curious because I do, I really do like to try. And um, I'm kind of a macaroni and cheese snob because um, uh, most gluten-free mac macaroni noodles are not that great no matter how much you doctor it up. So when I have mac and cheese, I'll only have my son-in-law's mac and cheese because he makes some really, really good mac and cheese, baked mac and cheese. Uh, so many different cheeses and it's just one it's, it's like a casserole but that's what I'll I'll it's worth the pain and he only makes it on special occasions holidays and such and special requests by my sisters but I don't request it I don't it's a lot of work I know that but what are your comfort foods and if uh, if it's not just like any kind of mac and cheese is your comfort food if you have it has to be a certain thing um, you have a recipe you want to share because my son-in-law won't share his <laughs> Thanks for watching.